Well, I'm out on the checkpoint today. And it's nice to have some dry weather. After five days of high winds and heavy rain. Of course, there's no guarantee it'll stay dry till I get back, but there we go. Enjoy it while it lasts. When I was having my bike fit, we were discussing the cost of bikes and so on. And I do in the bike fit, also an ex racer. And the conclusion we came to was the figure is £4,000. And you're thinking, right, thanks Steve, that was a short video then. But no, what we meant was a maximum of about £4,000. If you're a leisure cyclist, and if you're racing it's different. If you're racing, comes down to how much you or the team can afford really because you'll spend whatever it takes to get the perceived advantage well I've talked to before about technology and cycle racing and, you know, we'll go over that again but it's interesting but the UNO X team did extremely well in the Tour de France this year. First time out in the Tour. But also, they had the least expensive bike with any of the teams. And the temptation is always to spend more money. Because marketing people wouldn't be doing their job if they couldn't persuade you to part with your cash. Well, it's a lot windier than I expected. The logic behind the £4,000 figure is simple. As a leisure cyclist, The more you spend, the better the bike. If you have a steel frame bike, and you switch up to carbon, you'll notice the difference. You've got cheap wheels, and you switch out for some nice wheels, you'll notice the difference. If you've got a nine-speed saw or a group set, When you switch up to a 12-speed Ultegra, you'll notice the difference. Personally, I'm not a fan of electronic shifting, but if you switch up to electronic shifting, you'll notice the difference. I kind of like the purity of cycling being completely mechanical. So I'm kind of resistant to electronic shifting but that changes when you're trying to index the gears and you're struggling with it yeah when you can't get gears to index boy do you wish you had di2 put that aside going back to the cost to the bike i don't believe as a leisure cyclist, if you switch from Montegra to Jura Ace, you'll notice the difference. You get a set of aero bars and a one-piece cockpit, you won't notice the difference. I'm not saying you shouldn't have these things if you want them. 
but I don't think they'll make any difference. There's always going to be somebody on a group ride. It's got the cash, likes to show off a bit. He'll be having a £12,000 bike. Leaving the people will take it more seriously. And he's riding in a group. And the person next to him has got a £2,000 giant defier. So I'm not suggesting you go out and buy a bike for £4,000. Especially not as you start out. I mean, most places I go, I go on all three of my bikes, and that includes my 600 pound giant fast road. And changing it up from Sora to 105 it's made a huge difference in terms of rideability and enjoyment and I haven't got any further or faster than you oh, just thinking about getting into cycling I would suggest any bike is better than no bike because it really is a wonderful thing being out on the bike and modern bikes are really capable. I put, I put cyclocross tyres on my fast road. Made no difference to the performance on the road. And I was off. Gravel tracks. I mean, I didn't go silly. You know. I didn't try and do single track and all of those kind of things, but certainly gravel tracks and gravel roads, no problem at all. Even in the most appalling weather. And what you need to be careful of is what we refer to in the photography business as gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. I often get students come up to me, photography students, and they'll say, what lens should I buy next? And you say, well, what's wrong with the one you've got? Yeah, but I just want a better lens. Well, why? Are you struggling in low light? And your image is not sharp. What, what, what's the matter with the lens you've got? Oh. Well, simple. So the one that came with the camera can't be very good. So the next question is, what do you want to photograph? And you get the blank look. Oh, hadn't really decided on that yet. Well, it's kind of important. There's no point getting a portrait lens if you fancy doing action photography. And you get the same with bikes. People in a Facebook group. I'm getting my checkpoint on Saturday. What upgrade should I be doing? It's kind of unanimously agreed that the GR1 tyres that come with a checkpoint are rubbish. And I couldn't wait to get rid of them. I mean, unless I couldn't wait. I wasn't going to throw away good tyres, I'm a tight bastard.
when they wore out, I put more expensive tyres on. And have I noticed a difference? No, not at all. So have a look if you want to buy a bike and watch around. But don't get fooled into thinking you've got to spend a lot of money. Get what you can afford. Just enjoy being out on a bike.